Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse, and in today's segment, I'm going to take a walk down to the creek and you can join me. I want to talk with y'all about the phenomenon of prepping basically just disappearing off a lot of people's radar. And I want to go over why I think that is, and also recap for those of us who have more than a five minute memory, why we're doing what we're doing in many cases. So it seems like a lot of people over the past year and a half have conveniently forgotten the need to, to be prepared for uh, basic things. But I also see that there is a, um, how shall I say this? There is a, a lackluster sort of laissez-faire attitude that a lot of formerly very dedicated preppers um, are now embracing. And I think, look at that, Chuck, my dog. And I think um, partially people are very positive about uh, the economy, and they have a lot of reason to be. Um, President Trump, who I've been very critical of at times, has been doing some really good things for people um, and good initiatives, especially as far as limiting the size of federal government, which any freedom-loving person can wholeheartedly endorse, uh, limiting federal regulations and the size of the federal government specifically. But there are a few things that have not evaporated, um, and I want to talk about that with you all for a minute. I'm thinking primarily about some of the global circumstances. South Africa comes to mind. For those of you who have been paying attention, um, South Africa, the land without um, payment grabs, basically government confiscation. Let's put it this way, socialist government confiscation by the lowest common, common denominator of um, South African people is up for review in about a month and well I say that back it's in August it's in early August basically like six weeks from now if I'm not mistaken um this is a big deal and I know thank god the South African issue has gotten more publicity in recent months uh, as it should because of some of the issues that are going on there um there's a de facto genocide of the Boer people happening and nobody seems to care about it primarily because of the color of these people's skin, which is the height of hypocrisy when you consider a lot of the, the moaning and groaning that comes from these nations associated with the UN. But the long and short of it is that South Africa, the people of South Africa, specifically the Boer people of South Africa, are looking at facing down the very, um, real isn't the right word, uh, impending, the impending reality of having to defend themselves or flee for their lives. And that, I think, is one of the things that I'm looking at here in the months to come. Because what you're seeing with the South African situation is an emboldened, empowered mob of communists who have pretty much destroyed their country in the past couple of decades. Um, and that's not enough, of course. You know, and instead of wanting to have their cake and eat it too, now they want to eat the whole bakery. And if they are successful in taking these people's land and taking the Boer people's land and perpetuating the genocide that their leaders have openly talked about, uh, then I think that will be a kickoff globally for an empowerment of a lot of Antifa sort of groups and a lot of the, the communist mobs that we've been seeing that have been a little bit quiet in recent months. But, you know, make no mistake here. Our former president, Obama, has not suddenly gone off into Gulf Netherland and, and you know, ceased doing business. No, he's young. He's very much involved, um, very much connected. I have every reason to believe that the same infrastructure and organizational networks that they used in order to get him elected and to um, falsify votes, get dead people to vote twice and three times, vote early, vote often, the Cook County mentality. Um, I have no reason to believe anything other than they're using that organizational structure to undermine um, the the process here, the electoral process. They've done everything to try and drag the president through the mud for good things that he's done. And like I said, you know, I've been very critical of President Trump, especially with some of the comments that he's made um, regarding Second Amendment issues. But there have been some really good things that he's done um, in recent months, especially as regards to shrinking the federal government, size of federal government, federal regu regulation, things like that. Things that the Founding Fathers would have been for, you know. 
<laughs> Less government equals better, especially when we get to the, the state that we're at. But folks, the, the overall global circumstances have not changed. Basically, I think people have put, taken a nap after running the marathon of the past 16 years. When you consider the affronts to the Constitution perpetuated by both the Bush presidency and the Obama presidency, a lot of people are just spent emotionally. And it's like everybody's got to sleep sometime. And so I think a lot of people are taking um, a moment off and they're just kind of, you know, resting back on their laurels. And I understand that. But I think that's a mistake. Um, and I've not stopped. <laughs> if anything, I've doubled down on it, you know. And I think that we should continue to focus on that. One of the things that I'd recommend to people, and I see this kind of shifting I'd recommend that instead of buying stuff, that you pursue knowledge and skills and implementation on how not only to use your stuff, but also pursue knowledge, skills, etc. that will decrease your dependency on stuff. Because in the case of a supply line disruption, I talked to um, a woman in South Africa the other day, and they're going right now on three weeks with no transportation, basically because of strikes, uh, racial related strikes, they are anticipating having their grid shut down again because of racial related strikes, um, coordinated strikes with the uh, basically communist groups there for the purpose of driving these people out of their rightfully and lawfully owned property. And I think that that's going to be one of the things that we need to watch for here in the next few few days and weeks because I think that that's going to be the the moment of truth if land grabs in South Africa are successful if these people can essentially have their land stolen for no other reason than they than they're white and in some cases mixed um, I think that's going to be a flag for everybody who has any sort of entitlement um, any communist group, whatever, to go into absolute overdrive. And we need to be watching for that. Um, because the, the foundation that we have is cracked. If you've ever built a house or dealt with a troubled house, you know that a cracked foundation and a troubled foundation is not easily repaired. And we have been dealing with that here for a while. You know, we've got a very polarized country right now. We're in two different Americas. And even when you consider that these lines that are being drawn right now in America are not even along geographical lines. They're very, very much along population, um, urban versus rural and coast versus inland lines. And even within these places, like people, I keep hearing people make the comparison to the, you know, the coming civil war, like the former, you know, the war between the states. And I don't think it's going to be on, on that vein. It'll be probably a hybridization between the American Revolution, where you had loyalists and Tories, basically big government people, primarily located and ensconced in central um, power bases like the cities, uh, compared to, you know, their brethren either next door or in the, you know, the grasslands that just wanted to be left alone. And I do see that there are going to be economic, um, economic pieces in the puzzle. California secession is another thing that I'm watching for. I wholeheartedly wish them the best of luck. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in the right of secession. And in fact, um, so were the states of Rhode Island and New York, if you read their state constitutions. Um, they maintained the right of secession prior to entering into agreement with the other colonies. Okay, so, you know, people who, who bad talk secession, if you don't support secession, you don't support the American Revolution. The American Revolution was de facto a secessionary movement away from the British crown. And it rests on the principle that government derives its power from the consent of the governed. So there's a lot of issues coming up right now within, you know, the next few months that I'm watching because I think that they're going to be the linchpin. And I have not stopped prepping. So I hope you enjoyed the little chat here down by the creek. If you did enjoy the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me, Patriot Nurse. You can also like me on Facebook and you can support me on Patreon as well. And you can also get trained. I teach medical classes, um, 101 and 201 and 301 medical prep classes that focus on getting you prepared, getting you more self-sufficient to be able to take care of yourself. Without the heavy dependence upon gear and the heavy dependence upon technology, we need to be able to take care of people with what we've got at home in the event of things going sour. So I hope it was helpful for y'all. Have a wonderful weekend. For now, it's Patreon Air signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.